Hey everybody, Daniela here, and today I'm going to be talking about the laws that apply to us as women. So we all know that the Torah has 613 commandments in it, and we have things that apply only to Kohens, things that only apply in the land, things that only apply when the Besamikdash is standing, lots of different rules. So today I wanted to talk specifically for women. I know a lot of women, as we're becoming religious and we're beginning to learn Torah, we have questions like, what am, what am I supposed to do? What am I not supposed to do? Does this apply to me? Does this not? Should I put seed seed on? Should I wear tefillin? You know, do I pray three times a day? What are all these questions? And so we get a lot of these questions. So. Um, my kind of handy go-to book is this book here. It is called Halachas Bas Israel. Um, it is kind of my go-to reference guide. So I'm gonna slowly be going through this with you guys just to kind of cover exactly what is expected from us as a woman. Um, I am more familiar with Sephardi Halacha, so that's where I'll normally go, but this book is actually really good about explaining both of those halachas. So as I go through them, I will explain what Sephardi and, and Bezrah Hashem, I will try and um, also explain what is the ruling for somebody who is Ashkenazi. So I'm going to start with um, a woman's obligation in mitzvah. So a mitzvah is a commandment, a thing that we are actually required to do. Okay, so many laws of the Torah are expressed in the masculine form, so we really want to be aware of this. But men and women are equally obligated to all of them unless there is a specific source to suggest either a total or partial exemption. With certain exemptions, women are exempt from time-bound positive mitzvot. All prohibitions, however, apply to women. So what is positive and negative prohibitions? I want to break that down. So first is... Positive mitzvot are things that we have to do, that we are, we're told to do, and prohibitions are things that we are not allowed to do. So what they're explaining to us is any of the negative commands, any of the prohibitions apply to us because it doesn't require us to do something, it just requires us not to do something. So all of those are incumbent on all of us as women. Um, and when it talks about positive, it talks about time-bound mitzvot. So I want to talk about what that is. So. As a woman, our number one priority is our home, and we have children and, and daycare and cooking and all of these different things going on. And so we are not obligated in the same manner that men are um, in, in the praying three times a day, in um, putting on tefillin, on, on many of the, the time-bound specific things that men have to do at very specific times every day. So I want to talk about, as women, what we are and what we are not obligated in. So very, very important for us to know. There are a couple rules, um, exceptions, that we are as women obligated to do that are time-bound, and we all need to know them. So the first one is, is to eat matzah on the first night of Pesach. We are not um, in any way exempt for this. Every woman has to eat matzah on the first night at our Seder. Um, the next one is to rejoice in Yom Tov. We have an obligation to to go into Yom Tov v'simcha, like happiness, joy. We, we have to celebrate and enjoy Yom Tov. This is a commandment. Um, the next one is to gather every seven years to hear the reading of the book of Zevarim. Women are not obligated. The reason, or we are not exempt from this, excuse me, we are obligated, please correct that. We are obligated, we are not exempt from this because it's once every seven years and we are instructed very, very clearly um, that it says you are to gather the men, the women, and the children. This is what the Torah says and so we are not exempt from this. Um, this is something that we are required once every seven years to join together to read the book of Zavaram and hear the Torah in its entirety said to us. This is very, very important. Um, the next thing that we are we are obligated in at all times is all of the mitzvot connected to Shabbat. We are not um, in any way exempt from those. As Shabbat, you know, we're we're gonna light our candles. We're gonna do this. We're gonna we're not gonna turn on the electricity. We're gonna we're gonna follow all of the halachas um, in regards to Shabbat. We are not um, in any way um, exempt from those. And the last one is we are. Um, to perform a mitzvot whose time performance is seasonal and not t set to a specific date or hour. So there's certain things that we can do that, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily like you have two hours to do this because if a woman's just given birth or a woman is nursing her child or a child is sick, we may not be able to get to these. And so these type of things we are not obligated um, to do immediately. Um, but we want to make sure that we are aware that we are obligated to do these things. So, so one example of this I will give you is is, um, states that women are obligated to bring their first fruits to the base of Mikdash. Um, so this is 
it has to be fulfilled between Shavuot and Hanukkah, which makes it appear that it's time bound, but we have a very large gap in which that we could bring our first fruits. So if a woman, you know, has to bring this, th bring this first fruits to the base of Mikdash, obviously we don't have a base of Mikdash right now, Bazar Shem soon. Um, but we are obligated in this because we have several months in which that we're able to get this done. So this is, these are the type of halachas that we are still obligated in as women and we must make sure that we fulfill. Um, so time-bound mitzvot as well with rabbinic. So I just talked about all of our Torah obligations. Now I'm going to move to rabbinic. Um, for rabbinic obligations and mitzvot that have been put in place, um, we are exempting. We're exempted from time-bound positive commandments that apply to mitzvot instituted by our rabbis as well. Certain time-bound rabbinic commandments, which are enacted to commemorate miraculous events, are incumbent on women as well because we were included in this miracle. This is very important. So this group of um, commandments that we are obligated in women that is rabbinic in origin and not derisa, not directly from the Torah, is drinking four cups of wine at the Pesach Seder, lighting our Hanukkah candles, and the mitzvot of Purim. So it's very important that we understand as women, we are not exempted from these because these are miracles and things that we need to be a part of, okay? So the reasons for exemptions, I want to explain why. So a lot of women are like, why can't I? Why don't I? I want to. So there's a lot of questions with this. And, um, you know, I, I get a lot asked a lot of questions. Well, am I allowed to do this? Can I do this? Can I not do this? And so I want to talk about why these exemptions were put in place. Um, you know, we serve a creator who loves us and created us all with a very unique purpose. And so as women, our job is to ensure that our home is in order, to ensure that there's a meal on the table, that our children are loved and safe and cared for and, and nurtured and educated. And those things oftentimes come first. You know, a woman realistically may or may not be able to make it to synagogue three times a day to pray when she has small children and she, she has obligations in the home. And so these are things that have been... It's, it's very clear that they were not placed on us um, as women, they are placed on the men. So the Maharal brings a very, very interesting um, reason in addition to why women are not um, obligated in time-bound mitzvot. The Maharal gives an additional reason, the basic psychological difference between, a man, between men and women. Men with their natural aggressive tendencies cannot attain the peace and serenity of the world to come unless they sublimate there are these tendencies through the constant involvement in Torah study and performance of mitzvot. Women, however, are naturally more peaceful and serene and do not need this constant involvement in order to attain their reward. So men and women were created differently. Men um, are much more, and they have to be, much more, you know, parnasa and in and, and protecting the family and, and building a home. And, you know, they have all of these different things that they are obligated in. And most of those things, the one of the most important things to understand is most of these things take a man outside of the home um, for the most part a woman most of our most of our role and most of our life is in our home and not outside of our home and so the men are, are much more infiltrated into the regular society and they need constant reminders of who they are and and to affirm them and to bring them back to their to their identity and to Torah and to remind and ground them as women you know we can you know I, I tell everyone I can I can be singing a beautiful song of praise to Hashem while I rock my sick child to sleep as women we have um, a little bit of a different a different way of the way our brain the way our spiritually connect to Hashem you know we don't have to um, necessarily at a specific time be ordered to pray to remember to to thank our Creator and wake up with praise on our mouth and so there's things like this that are very important to understand so next thing is voluntary fulfillment of mitzvot i've had a lot of women ask me this question can i wear tzitzit can i wear tefillin can i do this can i do that why can't i do this why can't i do this um so i want to explain the differences and this is also um going to explain the difference in brahas in regards to um, Sephardi and Ashkenazi um, halacha. So I'm going to explain this really quick. So a woman, women may fulfill a mitzvot from which they are halakhically exempt with the exception of ones that are specifically restricted to men. So we are able to shake the lulav if we want. We are able to do certain things. There are two things that women are not allowed to do and that is tefillin and the second is um, zitzit. These are two things that are specifically designated for men and they are not to be done by women. There are some historic um, exemptions, but I'm not gonna get into the controversy of that. Um, it, it is halacha that women do not put tefillin and women do not wear zitzit. With the exception of that, women are able to do mitzvahs voluntarily, however, we are not obligated in them. So 
One really distinct difference between Sephardi and Ashkenazi halacha is understanding how the bracha works. So for Sephardi um, women like myself, when we do a voluntary mitzvah, like we're going to go and we're going to sit in the sukkah on Sukkot, we are not going to say a bracha about sitting in the sukkah because it's a voluntary mitzvot and we do not want to say a, a, a bracha in vain. We, want, we don't want to say one needlessly. Okay, so this is something that is a difference. Ashkenazi women, even though doing a voluntary mitzvah, will say the bracha in the, in the Sukkot. Sephardi women will not. So this is a distinction there. When doing voluntary mitzvahs, uh, Sephardi women will not say the bracha. Okay, so that's a, just a very, very minor difference, but we are able to do many of those mitzvot. We're able to shake the lulav. We're able, you know, we're able to sit in sukkah. We're able to do all these things, sleep in sukkah if we want, all of these different things that are obligated on men, but voluntary for us as women. Um, as Sephardi women, we will just not say a bracha because we're not going to voluntarily say, Hashem commanded me to do this. Asher Kiddushan of We're not going to say, you know, you commanded us and, and we're, we're doing this when we were not commanded. It's a voluntary thing for women. So, so um, Ashkenazi women do have the custom of saying and they should follow their custom and say that bracha. So that's the difference between the two. So for women, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Um, positive, positive mitzvot that are not time bound. So I want to talk about these. Okay, All positive mitzvot that need not be fulfilled in a particular time, such as sending away a mother bird from the nest, building a partition on the roof, or returning a lost object are incumbent on all women. So all of the laws that are not necessarily time bound, where you have to do it in the next 10 minutes, um, or, or two hours, or at this time of day, are incumbent on all of women of Israel. Um, there are a couple... So... Um, the exceptions to this rule are Talmud Torah, so a woman is not obligated in Talmud, in Talmud Torah study. Pidyon Haben, which is redemption of our firstborn, we are not obligated. Um, hang on, I'm sorry, need not be fulfilled. I want to make sure I'm saying this right. The exception to the yeah. Um, Pru or pru procreation. We are not we're not obligated in the 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 mitzvah of of, of being fruitful and multiplying. Um, all mitzvot re related to the judicial system and all mitzvot related to war and battle. Okay, so as women, we are not going to ever sit as the judges, and we're not going to be doing these certain things. There is one exception that's discussed, which is Devorah. A lot of people bring that up, and that's because of the necessity of that time. Um, she was a prophetess and also a judge at the time. This is not common practice. A woman cannot stand as a as a judge or a witness for a Beit Din, so it's very important that we understand women are not going to be a part of the judicial or the war system. That is completely our men in Baruch Hashem, they can keep that mitzvah. I'm okay with those things be remaining for them. Um, obviously, the obligation to be fruitful and multiply falls to a man and redemption of his firstborn and Torah study. So one thing with Torah study is to make sure that we do understand women, we are obligated in the study of any halacha that pertains to us. Okay, so anything that is going to cause me to break a rule or, or break Torah, I am obligated in understanding. So this is not saying that women cannot nor should not study Torah. I'm, I'm an active person that studies Torah all the time. Um, but what it's saying that we're not obligated in it in the manner in which a man is obligated. Okay. Um, next is women are obligated in all negative commandments of the Torah, including those that apply to spe specific times. So this is very, very important to understand. If it's a negative command, we are obligated to keep, um, to refrain from these and to not do these, whatever these prohibitions are. Exemptions to this rule include the prohibition against shaving hair off the corners of our head. Obviously, women, we, we, we're not going to need to shave the corner of our beards and our heads. Prohibition against a Kohen becoming defiled through contact with a dead body. Obviously, as a woman, we will never be the Kohen Gadol, and so the, the contact with a dead body for even a, even a woman who is of Kohen descent is not, it's not obligated on her. The next is all negative commandments relating to the judicial system, again, we, and all relating to the waging of war. So those negative commandments don't apply to us as women because we are not going to war. We are not going to be a part of the judicial system. So very, very important. So... <coughs> So then the women ask me, and it's very funny, my daughter's like, the boys have to do so many things. What do we get to do? So now I'm going to talk a little bit about things that we are as women, as, as Jewish women obligated in, and it's very, very important. So the mitzvot of nida, the mitzvot of challah, and the mitzvot of candle lighting are the main things um, that we're going to talk about that women, um, as Jewish women, we're all obligated in. We're obligated to understand. We're obligated to learn and know. So this is something very, very um 
very, very important to know. So we're gonna go through those. Let me get to the section of this for you. Okay. So the first is gonna be candle lighting. So let's talk about candle lighting really quickly. So candle lighting, we are obligated as women to light our Shabbat candles, right? Um, the mitzvah is just a requirement to light the candles. We normally do two because we're gonna talk about guarding and protecting you know, the, the Shabbat, so we're gonna have both of those candles lit. Um, it is a bigger mitzvah if someone chooses to take on to use oil. Um, I personally use oil in wicks every week. I use olive oil lighting, you know, lighting candles, um, but two tea lights does the job, but every Shabbat we need to light um, based on your minhag, you know, at least 18 minutes before Shabbat begins, we're gonna light our candles, we're gonna say the braha, we're gonna pray, and we're gonna daven for our children. It's a very, very high time um, for women, for us. Once a week we get to come before our Creator right before Shabbat begins, right before those doors open, and just thank Him and, and honor Him and light those Shabbat candles to welcome in, you know, the Shekhinah into our home as the Shabbat begins, the Shabbat Queen. Okay, so that is candle lighting. The next one is taking challah. I will do a separate video where I explain this in detail in the halacha and how we do it. Um, taking challah is, is a beautiful mitzvah as women that we have. So <coughs> the origin, origin of this goes back to the Beis Amikdash and, and the breads and the breads that were taken and taken away for the Kohen. Um, we obviously no longer have the Beis Amikdash and our Kohen are not in, in active status at this time. And so what we do is when we make challah, it's normally, it's approximately five pounds um, of flour. We make a big batch. We're going to pull a piece of that challah and we're going to separate it and burn it and not use it. So this is very important that when people are making challah, if you make a large enough batch that this needs to be done, there's a bracha that's set on it um, and we pull the challah and then we burn this piece um, as an honor. So this is a very, very big deal and I'm going to do a separate video all about challah Hala and um, the importance of pulling hala and a mitzvah and some it's a beautiful correction a lot of kabbalistic meaning a lot of depth to it that is a whole video in itself so understanding that this is one of the very specific and personal things for women men are allowed to do it just as men are allowed to light if a woman is ever too sick or ill their husband is allowed to light in her absence and a single man um, over bar mitzvah should light if he's by himself and alone he should light candles for himself um, the next, the next rule is nida. So this is also a very complex um, subject, which I'm going to do an uh, entire video specifically on. But nida is the laws of family purity. So this is, you know, when a woman has her cycle, um, separating from her husband, um, maintaining that separation. We don't sleep on the same bed. We don't have any contact. We don't pass things to each other directly. Um, and so we have our, our period of time where we're actually bleeding. Then we, we, we become clean. We check ourselves. And then we begin a seven-day counting period. I'm going to go into a detailed video about this and how this works. And at the end of that seven days, we check ourselves again and then we're gonna go in um, to mikvah and then be able to be returned and reunited with our husband it's a beautiful monthly cycle that happens um, in every Jewish family and it's an important and detailed one and this is one that's complete obligation is on the woman um, you know we, we have to do the counting we have to do the calculating we have to we have to keep track we have to check at certain times there, there's there's a lot of things that go into family purity and ensuring that we're presenting ourselves to a husband in a pure and acceptable state you know a, a permissible state to him and it's a very 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 big mitzvah that women do it's very personal and again like I said I'll do a video that is completely um, on both both khala candle lighting and um, Nida are gonna be kind of separate videos, but I just wanted to talk about those three things that as women we are obligated in, and obviously, again, we're obligated in any prohibition that the Torah states. So if this is, they say we can't do something, that's not time bound, we're not able to do it either. Um, but we are free of many of the um, more restricting things of, of praying at a specific time and doing this. And I'm actually, there's an entire section that's gonna talk about um, things that we are obligated in and how we're obligated in. So I'm going to go into detail on those and go through them. I hope this was helpful and brought a little bit of, you know, light and education. I'm going to be going through the entire book. Again, this is Halachas Bas Israel. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. It's, it's in English. It's very clearly written. It has all of the sources. Um, I don't know what, if you can see this, but it has kind of the actual here and then all of the sources where you can look it up and all of the different things. So it's very helpful if you ever want to look up sources or where something came from, the origins of different things. So it's very, very helpful. I hope this was helpful for everyone and have a wonderful day. Bye.